In this lesson, we're going to continue our introduction to classical conditioning by trying to isolate where a particular classically conditioned memory is located in the brain. Uh, since one of the stimuli here elicits fear, uh, it's this particular training procedure is often called fear conditioning. Uh, this is often done with rats in a chamber, and here the chamber has a speaker, and the rat is going to hear a tone. Now this will be the CS, the, the conditioned stimulus, the neutral stimulus at first. How do we know it's neutral? Well, let's take a look at some of the, the uh, physiological response parameters down here. Here we have blood pressure. Here we have cessation of movement. Generally, animals, uh, when, they, when something alarms them, they freeze. So cessation of movement is a measure of fear. And blood pressure rises when an animal is afraid. The bell doesn't really do much in the way of a fear response here. However, next in the training procedure, the tone will happen, and then the metal grid here is going to be electrified, so the rat is going to get a shock on its feet. So again, repeated pairings of tone, shock, tone, shock, tone, shock. Now, if we just looked at one uh, uh, training trial of this tone, then shock, sure enough, you get increase in blood pressure, and the animal freezes in fear. The shock itself is sufficient to generate that, so the shock is going to be the unconditioned stimulus, and the fear response is the unconditioned response. Of course, the procedure in classical conditioning is to associate the tone, the conditioned stimulus, with the, the fear response. And sure enough, then, after sufficient training uh, episodes, here is the rat uh, hearing the tone alone, and look at the rise in blood pressure and cessation of movement. This is an indication of fear. So the rat has come to fear the tone because the tone was paired with the shock. So in the rest of the lesson here, we'll try to isolate where in the brain the memory, the association between tone and shock is, is occurring. Where are those synaptic changes happening that, uh, uh, that is the basis for the association? Now the brain you see here is not a rat brain. This would be more like a human brain, and it's cut in such a way that uh, the, the sort of the, the cut goes from the top to the bottom of the brain in such a way as to separate the front half from the back half of the brain. Okay, so we see a slice through the brain, and the red pathway here would be the neural pathway that carries the shock signals. So the shock on the foot, so the um, neuron, uh, sensory cells in the foot are going to be sending action potentials up to the brain, and that would be uh, what the animal is feeling on its foot. So here we see a region of the brain called the thalamus, and we'll think of this as a relay station, sensory relay station. So we have a synapse in the thalamus, and some thalamus cells then send axons up to the touch cortex. So the rat's brain is registering that it was shocked on its foot. Well, the tone pathway, of course, is going to come in through the ears. The um, cochlear nerve is going to send signals up to the thalamus as well, and from the thalamus out to the auditory cortex. Now, um, the brain regions that uh, generate the fear response are shown down here in the, uh, in the, uh, the brainstem area here. Uh, and th there are several brain areas involved in fear, but we're going to uh, just indicate that uh, this is sort of the, the final output pathway for the fear response, which includes freezing, increased heart rate, stress hormone release, etc. So the task for researchers was to try to figure out uh, where in the brain is the uh, association happening between uh, the tone and the shock. Now we've already learned in the lesson about classical conditioning that we should expect there to be some place in the brain where there's a convergence of the two neural pathways. And the way we've drawn the diagram so far here it does not look like the two pathways, the blue and the red, they're not converging anywhere yet. But after investigating this for, for several years, uh, research teams have identified one place in the brain where these two pathways will converge, and that is the amygdala. And we're going to let this structure right here be the amygdala. And so now when we sort of complete the wiring diagram, what we have then is both the tone pathway and the shock pathway are going to be sending uh, electrical signals, action potentials, down into target cells in the amygdala. And so this is what we would expect. If the rat is going to be associating a tone with a shock, we ought to expect someplace in the brain there is going to be a site of convergence of the two neural pathways. Amygdala cells send uh, their axons down to the regions here that will generate fear.
But what exactly is happening in the amygdala? So let's let this kind of black circle here represent the amygdala. Here's our amygdala cell here. And prior to training, right, uh, as we saw in the previous lesson on classical conditioning, the tone initially did not generate a fear response. And we're going to model that by showing a weak synapse here, right, a kind of a small synaptic terminal there. On the other hand, the shock does naturally cause fear, right? So that was the unconditioned stimulus causing an unconditioned response, fear. And so we're going to model that here by showing a large synaptic uh, connection here. So a large synapse, a strong synapse here in the shock pathway. So initially, the tone will not generate fear, but the shock will. Of course, the procedure involves pairing the tone and the shock, tone and the shock. And as we saw in the previous lesson, what we'll uh, predict here is that the tone pathway is going to strengthen that synapse right there. And indeed, that is what researchers have found, that as a result of training, the tone pathway now, those uh, inputs, uh, are better able to drive the target cell in the amygdala, target cells in the amygdala, to threshold, and so you'll get a fear response. So here again, the fear conditioning case illustrates some general principles about learning. Uh, it of, learning often involves associating things in the world, and here we're associating tone and shock. Learning involves convergence, then. The neural pathways for the tone and the shock have to converge somewhere. In this case, it is the amygdala. Uh, and in addition, it illustrates that the actual biological basis of the learning itself is changes in synapse strength. Now, if the amygdala really is the site of the memory, then we should make some predictions. If we damage the amygdala, right, then we should uh, prevent the acquisition of a condition response. In other words, we, if we damage the amygdala, then we should be able to give the tone and shock and tone and shock uh, uh, repeated presentations, and the animal will never show a condition response. And in fact, that's what happens. So if uh, amygdala, uh, amygdala lesions uh, abolish the acquisition of a condition response. And in addition, if the animal's already uh, showing a condition response, it's already afraid to the tone, then if we go ahead and damage the amygdala, uh, the condition response is eliminated. No longer does the animal show respond, uh, a fear response to the tone alone. So those kinds of uh, pieces of evidence support the suggestion that the actual site of the memory is in the amygdala. Now, what about the auditory cortex? Turns out if you lesion the auditory cortex, it does not interfere with the association of the tone and the shock. And from the wiring diagram, you can see why. Because uh, lesioning the auditory cortex doesn't interfere with this uh, convergence down in the amygdala. And why do you even need a, 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 an auditory cortex? Well, it turns out animals with damage here, they have more difficulty um, when the paradigm involves distinguishing between two different tones. One tone might be paired with a shock, but another tone, a different tone, is not. There, the auditory cortex is helpful and is required for uh, making those kinds of distinctions. And one final note, uh, uh, a lesion to the amygdala does not eliminate the fear to the shock. So while we have the shock pathway um, running into the amygdala here, uh, there are other uh, areas of the brain that are receiving the shock information and that can generate a fear response. So uh, amygdala lesions do not eliminate the unconditioned response. What they do is they eliminate the, the brain's ability to associate some neutral stimulus with uh, another stimulus that, that elicits fear. So here we have then evidence that an actual memory, the site of a memory, has been localized here. It happens to be in the amygdala here. Uh, and uh, the evidence for that is strong, that damage to this re uh, region abolishes that memory.